So, again, choice. This is an easy example. Later on you'll see where you have to dig a little bit further. Um, but it's not impossible even if you get something further down the list. Which leads me to my second reason why integration map parts is not called reverse product rule. It's not just a rule that you apply blindly. It's not just products. Not just products. What do I mean? This integral here, the integrand is fairly obviously something times something else. It's like, well, use integration by parts, right? Other things don't look like products, but you can write them as products and then use integration by parts. You might say, why do that? And the answer is, when you have literally no other alternatives. So, feast your eyes on this. Now, we were first introduced to, um, you know, definite integrals and integrals, and we used to think of definite integrals as like integrals, but more work. Let me say that again. Um, we used to think of definite integrals as like indefinite integrals with an extra step. It's like do the indefinite integral, pop your numbers in, do the evaluation, and off you go. Okay? In a case like this, actually, a definite integral would probably have been dramatically easier. Can anyone tell me why the indefinite integral is harder than an equ equivalent like, say, I don't know, something like, am I getting this right? Hmm. Yeah, something like that would be fine, right? This would actually be a trivially easily, easy question to do. Extension 1, you could do this question without any integration by parts. What would you do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. give me a little more detail, sure. What would you do? Integrate Yeah, fantastic. This thing's going to give you an area, yeah? If you have to think about what sine inverse looks like, think about what the graph is, right? Like so, okay? You're like, oh, this part down here, it's easy to work out by contrast with, um, as you said, just to go to the other axis, right? But I haven't given you that, have I? I've given you this. So we need to find a primitive of some kind. Now I gave you this clue. I said even though it doesn't look like a product, we can write it as a product and then use all of this knowledge we already have. So I'm going to hand you this. Let's integrate not just sine inverse, but 1 times sine inverse. Look, Ma, it's a product. You have to now make a choice. You can think about your detail acronym here, which might be an easier thing to choose for DV. It's not that hard a choice. Recognizing that if you chose this to be DV, you've just recreated the same problem you started with, right? So let's choose the other one to be DV. It's, I guess it's algebraic, sort of. So I'm gonna call this U, this DV. And then let's see what we get. I'll give you a minute or two's head start. So, Somewhat like before, I'm so content that you can take this from here that I'm not even going to finish this, but just want to make sure you're headed in the right direction. Here is me choosing my u and my dv, which we already briefly discussed. Here is me putting in my uv minus integral of v du. When you have a look at your integral of v du, tell me what you notice. Think back like a week to when we did integrating when you've got quadratic denominators. What do you see? What do you see? Have a think. Say it again. Thank you. Reverse, Reverse train rule looks great to me, right? You've got this thing in here, which has its derivative, or almost its derivative, just up here in the numerator, right? So this is going to be something like an f dash on f situation. And so you're good to go. You can use your reverse train rule here, and I'm pretty content you'll get that. That's not the main focus for today. So why isn't it called uh, reverse product rule? Answer. It's not just a rule you blindly apply, you need to think and make some choices. And secondly, it's not just for products. So I guess in summary you could say, and don't, don't ask me how long I spent taking this, making this. It was just, I just couldn't help myself. Okay, now I have one last example to have a look at, and it doesn't really fit under either of these categories of, um, I better put that away otherwise you'll not concentrate, right? Um, it doesn't fit under either of these categories of why Integration by parts is called integration by parts. Um, but it's a, what's what I'm looking for? It's going to lead us into what we're having a look at next lesson. So can you write this third example with me, please? We're going to form the integral, or calculate the integral, of e to the x sine x. All right. So. Just like before, I'd like you to help me think, right? Use your detail acronym, right? Which is the best choice here for dv? 
It's right at the top of the list, right? Look, you've got an exponential here. Okay, so I'm gonna choose this as dv, choose that as u. Make sense? Okay, let's have a quick go. So if I get u being sine x, someone tell me what du is? Cos it's cos x, thank you. If I made e to the x dv, then v is going to be e to the x, fantastic. So things are all marching along just nicely. You then start to say, well, okay, I'm going to say that equals to, okay, I've got my uv, so there's uv, like so. And then I'm going to subtract, I've got enough space, just I think, the integral of v du. At which point you say, hmm, what have I done here? Okay, now, believe it or not, I've made progress, even though it doesn't look like I have. Usually when we try and like massage problems, we hope that they will get better as we progress, but it looks like I've created a problem here, which is of a very similar level of challenge to the problem I started with. Do you agree? It's like, uh, haven't improved this much, okay? Don't lose hope, stay with me. If you got presented with this as a question in and of itself, what would you do? You'd do it by parts, right? So let's have a go. Again, the challenge, uh, sorry, rather the choice of which is u and which is dv is not that complicated. I'm gonna call this u and this dv much like I did before. I'm not even gonna write uh, v and dv again because I already did them in blue over there. I'm just gonna say if this u equals cos x, then my du on dx in this case will be, just be careful, watch out for the plus or minus, what am I gonna get? Then you sign x, right? Okay, so now I'm gonna, once more with feeling, okay? I've got this e to the x sine x hanging out the front. And then I subtract, and then here comes another integration by parts. This u, this v, <laughs> someone just, sorry, okay, well done. So here comes the new, u and the new v. Is that okay? uv, bam. Here comes the new v du and something interesting has happened, right? Here's v and then here's du. Hold on a second. Now you do have to be careful because there's count them, not one, not two, there's three negatives there. So very easy to get wrong. One, two, three, they're all being multiplied. But look at this, this is actually what we started with, sort of, right? There's an e to the x sine x being integrated there. So we're gonna pull the trick here, which wouldn't have made sense if I did it right at the start, but now you can see why I'm about to do it. This original integral, I'm going to give it a name. It's an integral. I've used the letter i for something else in maths before, so that was the lowercase i. I'm gonna call this capital I for integral, okay? This same integral appears right here. So I can do a bit of substitution here. This whole thing is capital I, right? Just be really careful with your signs, like I said. e to the x sine x. This here, there's just one minus sign. e to the x cos x, you okay with that? And then one, two, three. So I think I get minus e to the x sine x. But I already know what that is. That's I, right? So therefore, I'm going to substitute this for this, which is what I defined it to be at the beginning. So this gives me i's over here. I might as well do a bit of factorizing while I'm at it, just because I like to th make things nice and tidy. And I'm also lazy about writing another e to the x. And then I've got a minus i here, right? So now remembering that the whole goal here was wanting to find out what i is, I'm just gonna add an i to both sides. That gives me two over here. And all I need to do now is divide through by two. Does that make sense? So I'm just gonna do it here. That's how lazy I am. You okay with that? That's right. good, saving, saving school results. That's right, that's right. I'm being, I'm being very sustainable, right? 100%, okay? As long as you saw me do it, okay? Uh, thank you, I did do my final, ah, oh, so close. Um, I did do my final integration really from here actually, uh, because, because at this point, it's still defined as an indefinite integral. Does that make sense? And then here, once I'm like, oh, they're all gone now, I have an actual value or expression function for i, I should definitely, like Angus says, include my constant integration. Make sense?